Hi, welcome back to our channel. Today's video takes us on a journey through history as we delve into the founding and early years of the International Committee of the Red Cross ICRC. From the Battle of Solferino in 1859 to the establishment of the first Geneva Convention in 1864, we'll explore the visionary efforts of Henry Dunant and the pivotal moments that shaped the ICRC into the humanitarian force we know today. So, sit back, relax, and let's uncover the remarkable story of compassion, diplomacy, and the birth of international humanitarian law. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our historical explorations. Now, let's dive in. The Red Cross was founded by Henry Dunant, who was shocked by the suffering of wounded soldiers at the Battle of Solferino in 1859. He wrote a book about his experiences, A Memory of Solferino, which called for the creation of national societies to help wounded soldiers. Dunant's ideas were taken up by the Public Welfare Committee in Geneva, which formed a working group to formalize the concept of national societies. In 1864, an international conference was convened to adopt a standard emblem for medical personnel on the battlefield, a red cross on a white background. The conference also adopted the first Geneva Convention, which made it compulsory for armies to care for all wounded soldiers, regardless of their side. The ICRC's first task was to encourage the creation of national societies and to act as a channel of communication between them. Its first field operation was in 1864, during the war between Germany and Denmark. Delegates were sent to work on each side of the front line, marking the beginning of the ICRC's operational role as a neutral intermediary between belligerents. Dunas' ideas were well received, and national societies were established throughout Europe in the following years. The Geneva Convention was later adapted to include wounded, sick, and shipwrecked in warfare at sea, and governments adopted other laws to protect war victims. The ICRC also expanded its own work, undertaking new activities such as visiting prisoners of war and transmitting lists of names so that their families could be reassured. By the end of the 19th century, Dunant was living in obscurity in a Swiss mountain village, but he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1901. He died in 1910, but by then, the Red Cross and the Geneva Conventions had taken root in Europe, North and South America, Asia, and Africa. Both would be put to a severe test during the First World War. As we conclude this journey into the founding years of the International Committee of the Red Cross, we reflect on the enduring impact of compassion and humanity in times of conflict. The story of Henry Dunas's vision and the birth of the Red Cross and Geneva Conventions reminds us of the importance of solidarity and the pursuit of peace. Thank you for joining us on this adventure, and until next time, take care and stay curious.